welcome back. Well, as you can see, I'm uh, set up with my M1A, my Springfield Armory M1A. Let's talk a little bit about it first. What we have today is a beautiful day in the 80s. It's a Memorial Day, and uh, my blessings to all those who uh, served in the military and, and for those who, we, uh, who, gave their, who gave their best, and gave their last uh, in the uh, defense of our country. My hat's off to them uh, in all generations. Well, this rifle uh, hails from the uh, original M14, uh, the military M14, which was uh, in service for only about eight years, um, following the Garand's uh, reign. And uh, it's, based, it's based largely upon the Garand's design with some modifications to uh, incorporate a, box, a detachable box magazine. Um, and a few other, a few other uh, things which change the uh, gas operation to some degree. But uh, I've spoken about that in a previous video, so I want to, I want to do some actual range testing with some various uh, ammo. Um, it's curious to me that uh, most of the, virtually all the videos, videos I see about accuracy testing with the uh, M1A is with the, the loaded or the national mash and things like that, but nobody ever seems to be interested in how a standard uh, M1A does. And the standard is the one that uh, is based most exactly upon the specifications of the, min, uh, the military M14. It has the same barrel diameter and everything, uh, same barrel length. So uh, this is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, if, if you want to know what an M14 was capable of doing, this, is, this most closely will resemble that uh, sort of performance. Now, I've, I've spoken in, previous, in a previous couple of videos about the uh, uh, M1A, so I'm not going to reiterate too much about that stuff and the, you know, the way it's made and everything. Uh, and you know that in one of my previous videos, I rectified a situation where I had a very, very loose rear uh, sight. The, the, the peep aperture was so loose that I measured, by my measurement, the amount of thousandths of an inch that it moved side to side would have given me about a five MOA accuracy uh, problem. In other words, I would have lost five minutes of angle of accuracy, five minutes, five inches per hundred yards. Uh, that's, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's not excusable for any, any a firearms company to allow a gun to go out of the factory with a loose sight of any kind. A loose sight is just inexcusable. So um, I, I rectified it. I showed you how I did that by glass bedding it as tight as can be now so there's no wiggle. Uh, I shouldn't have had to do that. Um, perhaps I should have uh, called uh, Springfield Armory and complained. My, my, problem with the, my problem with this situation is that I had feedback from other people who had exactly the same experience with their M1A standard. So I, 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 hesitate, I hesitate to wonder if there's a scheme involved with uh, you know, equipping substandard sites on an M1A standard to you know, essentially boost the performance of the loaded and the, you know, all the other various models which are higher price models. You shouldn't have to pay extra for a a tight sight, tight sights is just part of what every rifle is. Even my ba my my Daisy BB rifle, uh, BB gun had uh, tight sights. So uh, anyway, that's been fixed. Um, we'll see how this rifle does with an with various ammunition. I've got some IMI systems. This is a genuine NATO full metal jacket, 150 grain ball ammo. Uh, it's made by Israeli military industries, and um, they make some of the they make some of the most consistent and finest uh, NATO stuff there is in the world. This is made for their own national defense. Uh, I've shot it in uh, this rifle before, and it's as good as it's as good as anything I've seen, and it, it certainly shoots as fine as uh, U.S. military ball ammo. Uh, and the rest of it is all commercial. Um, these all run about uh, in the 2,800 and so uh, foot per second range, which I think is that that's about as much as I want to put out of a 150 grain 308 bullet uh, for for any kind of standard game hunting. You know, medium medium sized game. You're talking um, 
white-tailed deer, hogs, everything like that. I mean, 150 grain bullet is not a bullet with uh, terrific uh, sectional density, but because it's such a large bore, 30 caliber uh, basically blows its way through on a deer. Deer are not hard to uh, put down. They're not, they don't present a uh, difficult target for a, uh, for a bullet. So anyway, these are federal, non-typical, that's, that's the, the uh, name of the cartridge, federal non-typical whitetail. Uh, and these are uh, 2820, um, 150 grain uh, soft point bullet. See how that does. Um, I've got some uh, Seiko uh, hammerhead. These are uh, also in that same velocity ballpark. These are uh, 2805, um, 150 grain bullet. Um, Norma. Norma is also one of the finer uh, cartridge companies out there. These are 2822. Again, you know, when you're talking, you know, a handful of feet per second, it means nothing with a rifle, uh, comparis comparatively. Um, and that, that's sort of, there's, you can get variations in the box which amount to, you know, 80 or 90 feet per second with much ammo on the, on the market. Uh, here's uh, 2820, this is Winchester's uh, version. This is a, uh, PowerPoint bullet. It's been out for many, many years. I, I've, I've, used, I've used countless of these uh, in different cartridges, uh, different calibers. Winchester, it's a good, it's a good uh, standard ROM. And uh, just to see what it does with the, uh, the premium match stuff, I've got this, this is considered by many to be the uh, competition cartridge on, you know, out there. And this is 175 grain uh, Sierra Match King Boat Tail Hollow Point Gold Medal Match by Federal. Uh, 175 grain bullet. This is, is not what this rifle was tuned for. Um, you know, it's, this, is, this is a this is a barrel which is uh, quite uh, well. I, I would say, to be very honest with you, it's one of the thinnest barrels that I own. Um, it perhaps is the thinnest barrel. I, I'm not even sure if my I'm not even sure if my Beeman R7 has got such a thin barrel. Uh, let me pull out the figures. I'll show you. Um, you know, the the uh, M14 is often thought of as being, you know, a very substantial rifle. Well, a lot of it, a lot of it goes to the uh, substantial piece of uh, tree trunk that they put on this thing. Um, but as far as the actual dimensions of the uh, barrel, it's uh, one of the smallest, most thin diameters that I know of. There's no taper in this barrel. This is a straight. This is a straight barrel, uh, and it measures forward of the gas port. Uh, it's 0.593. Keep that number in mind. 0.593. My uh, Model 70 Featherweight uh, 257 Roberts has got a 0.560 right at the very, very end at the at the muzzle end, but it tapers aggressively. Even though it's a featherweight barrel, it tapers aggressively. And just forward of the stock, which is only about this far back, by that point is measuring point, uh, six, uh, point 0.705 rather, point 0.705. So everything in front of the stock averages 632, and that's against 593 for this rifle. Mile and 336 is 0 0.640. A Winchester Model 94 is 0.600, and the Mini 14 should probably be called, this should probably be called the, the Mini because the Mini 14 has got an, uh, a barrel which is 602 at the muzzle and comes back to uh, where it begins to taper on the, the newer 580 uh, series and beyond where, where it begins to taper in front of the stock. Uh, that's 0.625. That's a very heavy barrel, and it averages 0.614. So it's actually it's actually the heaviest barrel of all the uh, of all the uh, guns that I uh, mentioned. Well, except for the Winchester Featherweight, that averaged uh, 0.632. So anyway, that's what that's what you you're talking about with a uh, M14 uh, M1A standard is a uh, light, very lightweight barrel. Um, you know, the military, I'm sure, Ordnance Department had to uh, make some decisions when it came to um, keeping the barrel that small. Uh, first of all, they were they were not they were not building a rifle which uh, was demanding uh, 
minute of angle accuracy. Um, they were uh, looking more for a, a long barrel uh, that could be equipped with a bayonet. Back in the day, uh, you know, World War I, World War II, Korea, and everything, be, everything uh, prior to that, um, bayonets were, that was part of the, that was part of the battle uh, rifle. And I mean, we're talking back hundreds of years. That was part of, that was part of the uh, design of a battle rifle was to have a bayonet. So that has since been pretty much supplanted. The last, the last bayonet charge, in other words, the actual, an actual assault upon, uh, you know, an entrenched enemy of some sort with, with bayonets uh, reportedly occurred in, in Korea. Uh, I know that there were battle, uh, battles, you know, individual confrontations involving bayonets, uh, in, even in Vietnam and, and things like that. So, um, but those were, those were individual circumstances. But that was, the, that was the nature of the beast then, was to have a, long, have a long rifle, which would provide a significant reach with that bayonet. Um, so that was, that was something which guided the um, design of the uh, M14, just as it guided the design of the, the M1 Garand, and uh, even to some degree, the, the longer original barrel of the M16. We did a lot of bayonet training when I was in the military. Uh, when I was in basic training, uh, that was that was standard part of the. We did a lot of it. Trust me. Um, so that that was that was the whole scheme. Um, this rifle, as I, I'm reiterating my, you know, this, this rifle was designed to have uh, an accuracy standard of four MOA, four minute of angle. That means four inches per hundred yards, and that's based upon you know, testing and evaluation of, you know, of a, a given sample in a lot. Uh, I, I have no idea what uh, sampling uh, they did, but, but I'm sure that uh, during, during times of war and World War II and, and Korea and things like that, when they were pouring out M1 Garands, I'm sure they weren't uh, testing too often. Uh, they, were, they were testing perhaps uh, once in a lot of maybe, who knows, maybe Two or three hundred, five hundred uh, before they went to, before they went to the range uh, to uh, see what it was doing, to verify it. So these were not tested to be um, these were not tested or required to be uh, guns of uh, the type of accuracy which we consider to be, um, you know, e even even standard accuracy from a. Um, relatively inexpensive rifle. You can buy any number of very inexpensive rifles from Savage or Ruger or, you know, the American or whatever. And they're all capable of sub-MOA accuracy. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, cost, they cost very, very little. So uh, these are not made to that standard of accuracy. But I want to see what an M1A standard does. I, without all the baloney, without, without putting a scope on it, these guns were not designed for scopes. Scopes was something which was an afterthought, which they put on for snipers and things like this. But, you know, this this rifle was issued as is without a scope. Uh, to me, it's a horrific thing to be putting. A, the, the gun already weighs over 10 pounds. I mean, you don't need to have another another four pounds of scope on it, um, and it proves nothing because uh, you know the the, the peep sight is uh, is capable of fabulous accuracy. Anybody who shoots anybody who shoots peep sights in competition and uh, you know civilian uh, uh, matches, uh, they know that peep sites are very capable of sub-MOA accuracy. I know it personally. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm going to be shooting at a, a black bull. Uh, I've got myself equipped here with a uh, past recoil pad because uh, I'm wearing my tropical weights today. It's in the uh, high 80s. Uh, the sun is, the sun is uh, blinking at me here pretty good. And uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to be shooting, <laughs> I'm not going to be shooting willy-nilly with just a, a lightweight cotton shirt. I'll be black and blue. So, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a 19-year-old uh, trooper anymore. So let's see what this does. I'm going to put on my uh, hearing protection and uh, start cranking some out. What I'm going to do, my, what I'm hoping to do, and by the way, before I forget, this, this 
rifled, uh, this uh, barreled action does not fit tightly into this stock. Um, that's, that's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of annoyance to me. Um, again, I don't know whether they're rigging the deck so that you, you have to, you know, you have to pay more simoleons to buy a, uh, to buy a, an accurate gun. But uh, there's, you know, my, my Mini 14 I just showed you in my last video, I mean, it went in with a snap fit and it is tight. There is no movement whatsoever. It could not possibly be tighter with glass bedding. When this receiver goes in, and I don't have a tool right now to pull this out, maybe before I uh, go I'll remember to do it, but this, this receiver rocks in this, in this stock uh, without this trigger guard. The trigger guard cannot be relied, the, the pressure of this trigger guard uh, spring steel cannot be relied upon to uh, uh, fully dampen and to uh, seize that uh, receiver. So, like I say, I, I really hope they're not rigging the deck to uh, make you buy up. But as it is, um, it's it's not it's it's not it's not as far as I'm concerned uh, the best of the best. The um, I I have inspected a number of uh, M14s and I have removed them from from the stock. The military uh, ordnance department didn't do any better either. Uh, I mean, they anybody who anybody who had a uh, M14 in the military knows that uh, or a Garand knows that when you undo that undo that trigger guard, there's not much there's there's not much uh, tightness involved with the uh, stock to the action uh, without uh, without doing some uh, glass bedding work. I think they could do better, um, but anyway, we're going to see how the that's the point of this whole video is to see how the gun does as is without uh, monkeying around with it. So, and as I and I say with the with the caveat that I did fix this rear sight because I mean it's just there's there's no possible way that I'm going to try to accuracy test a gun which I know is in, impossible of accuracy. So that's it. Well, as you can see, I've got a uh, wind flag set up at 100 yards down by the target, and I also have one positioned at 50 yards. So I can see if there's any uh, shearing of wind. It doesn't appear to be. It's all blowing fairly consistently from about uh, nine to ten o'clock, and it's a, uh, I'd say about seven to uh, ten mile an hour breeze. Uh, shouldn't be too significant. So I've got ten round magazines. Uh, a ten round magazine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire ten rounds of each. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to uh, space my shots out. Uh, I'm just going to fire at a casual rate. Um, the wind right now is still continuing to blow pretty consistently. I've got two wind flags down there, and they're still showing a, a uh, wind coming from approximately nine to ten o'clock from from my left. Uh, it's starting to vary a little bit, starting to blow a little bit more from 11 o'clock, uh, almost to 12 o'clock at, at times. Um, I've got a, the flag set up at 50 yards and 100 yards. And the breeze is, according to the ribbons, I'm getting probably about a seven, uh, seven to 10 mile an hour consistent breeze. And I like the fact that it's consistent. There's, there aren't too many gusts. So uh, the group should be fairly, you know, it, there should, there should be no, I shouldn't say they could be consistent, but uh, it should go, it, it should go uh, well as far as the wind conditions are concerned. I'm just going to let them go and, and uh, let the wind carry whichever way they want. They, if they drift to the right, that's fine. This rifle happens to be sighted in for that IMI, and that's what I'm going to start out with. Uh, that's 10 clicks up with this particular rifle. That just happens to be that way. And I've got it calibrated so I know uh, I don't know what I don't know where those others will print, and I really my hats off and my thanks to uh, all my Patreon uh, assistants, uh, those of you who uh, you know have have provided some uh, help for me so I can purchase these consumables and test them. So that's that. Let's see how it goes. This does have a fabulous trigger. Um, bright day, I got a nice sight picture. You 
you can hear that uh, first stage. Recoil in the uh, M1A with military grade ammunition is, is uh, very doable. It's not bad at all. Just looking to see where those are being flung. Can't tell. Usually they're pretty close by. I don't have my drone up today. Um, I put it up a little earlier and I was getting too many warnings about uh, planes in the vicinity. And even though I'm not gonna be flying at that altitude, uh, sometimes their equipment is picking up information about me and I don't wanna have any pilots uh, getting concerned. So, uh, it's, it, you know, this is Memorial Day. Um, so there's a lot of people up there sightseeing. Now, that last shot, I was starting to get some mirage off the barrel. Uh, if I had had a scope on there, it would have looked like pea soup. It, it, it really would have been like pea soup. Um, you know, I don't have that compression factor, but uh, I'm getting some mirage now. So uh, that, might push, that might push some shots up because it causes you to chase your, you're not actually seeing, you're not actually seeing the target. You're seeing a, refracted uh, aberration of the image. In other words, it's just like looking in a, in a brook and you see a fish down there, you know, an archer who is shooting a fish with a bow and arrow knows he can't shoot at the fish because the fish isn't there. It's, it's, it's at a different place because the light waves bend. And that's what you get with, that's what you get a lot of times with uh, a rifle. And sometimes people say that their rifle climbs as they uh, shoot. That's not the rifle that's climbing, it's the shooter that's climbing. You're actually chasing your shots higher because the physical aberration, the, the visual aberration of that target is that the target is, the light waves are bending uh, with, with the mirage, and so the target appears higher than it is. Just like when you see a, on a long highway on a hot day, uh, you can see a truck coming towards you from a couple of miles away, and the truck looks like he's floating up in the air. And that's exactly what you're getting here. You're getting a slight uh, refraction, uh, which is causing the, the target to uh, rise up uh, visually. It's not rising up, but it's rising up visually. It's causing you to shoot higher. You begin chasing it. So, you know, after a while, you can actually start printing your shots cons consistently, consecutively higher. So I'm, I'm just holding down, uh, I take that into account. I'm shooting with a, you know, with the, the, the breeze that I have right now is actually uh, very much helping uh, eliminate uh, Mirage because the breeze blows fresh air into it. So you, you know, it blows away that, uh, you might call it like a wind chill factor, it blows that, uh, heat wave off of the off the barrel, so it's it's a it's a good thing. Even though I may be drifting to the right with it, okay. You have bugs out here that will bug you. Look like one of my wind flags is starting to 
tip over. And that's it. That's the last of my IMI. And uh, my heartfelt thanks and prayers to uh, everyone today for uh, this Memorial Day uh, in recognition and uh, remembrance of those who have given their last uh, in defense of our country. And uh, it's something I it's something that I uh, can't help but uh, understand with. Uh, a lot of compassion being a person of the military myself and uh, you know there are there are uh, there are a lot of people these days that just don't simply understand what Memorial Day represents but uh, I certainly do so let's go let's go downrange uh, we'll check that target out and uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back here because uh, it's it's a hundred yards it's a good hike for me and uh, that, that way I can leave the camera set up as it is so let's see how it goes. Well, that uh, wind that we're, it's, it's picking up pretty good now. I'd say we're, we're up to a uh, 15 mile an hour wind according to those ribbons. They're blowing straight out 15 to 18 miles per hour. Um, I'll uh, show you those targets. We'll, we'll, we'll do those targets indoors. I'm marking them so we can uh, analyze them later. Um, the group did move about uh, two and a half inches to the right, um, and it's palm size. You know, we're talking we're talking full military accuracy, for MOA uh, or better. In other words, larger. <laughs> that's that's the nature of these beasts. So uh, let's press on and see how the uh, civilian stuff does. A little bit higher velocity. We're talking probably another uh, 50 to 60 feet per second. Nothing. Nothing big. So right now we've got the uh, federal non-typical whitetail. See how that does. And, and by now the barrel has cooled quite a bit. Uh, just by walking down and changing targets was uh, a good way to uh, cool that barrel down. So. A tiny bit more recoil with that load, but nothing, nothing big. I have a uh, misfeed. You know, some ammo is just not tuned to uh, the gas systems on. Uh, these rifles. Let's see if that's an issue. Well, that one certainly ejected. We had one misfire, though. I should say one failure to eject. I don't know if that one ejected or not. We'll see. Yeah, it did. My sling is getting in the way here. You know, very much like my uh, synthetic stocked uh, Mini 14, uh, the comb on this is a little bit low. Um, 
you know, it, I suppose I suppose for a, a battle rifle there were reasons for that. Uh, it doesn't position your head very uh, very well for bench shooting. Uh, it's more it's more suited for uh, uh, prone and things like that. Uh, standard standard position shooting. So it's a little bit more clumsy to uh, try to acquire. Right now, see my face, my head wants to be up here. That's where my cheek wall wants to be. So it's a little bit it's a little bit awkward for me to get down into that position. So, just saying. There's 10. We'll let this one cool down again while I change that target down there, and uh, we'll be back. The next one I think up will be the uh, Winchester. Well, I'll keep you guessing about that group. I can say one thing, that load, the Federal uh, non-typical, shoots into the wind, so uh, basically it uh, it really contradicted the wind coming from this side, and it shot into it, and it shot more to the left, considerably more to the left than the uh, IMI did. But uh, we'll examine the targets later. Um, we're going to be shooting the uh, Winchester uh, power points. One of the things that uh, comes up uh, many times on blogs is whether or not uh, you can shoot or you should shoot uh, soft point, non full metal jacketed uh, ammo in uh, in these rifles. Um, you know, I know what the manual says, um, and I you know I'm a believer in manuals, but I'm also a believer in what I see. Um, I examine the magazine very carefully. The magazine does not uh, in any way. Uh, come in contact with the point of the bullet. Um, the feed ramp, it's a standard feed ramp. It's the same sort of feed ramp that you find on any, uh, on any rifle. Uh, it's positioned the same way. It's not aggressive uh, by any means. Uh, it's a very, very, very low uh, point of incline. Um, I've examined the uh, bullets after they've been fed in. Uh, in other words, aggressively chambered. And I see no, I see no significant damage to the uh, bullet tip. There's no shaving of it whatsoever. Uh, I don't see any, I don't see any sort of, uh, you know, accumulation of pieces of lead or anything like that. Um, some people make some rather silly uh, comments on blogs, and they, they say, well, you know, the, the lead will get into the the lead will get into the barrel. If, if, I don't know how in the world, how in the world a, a uh, tip of a bullet is somehow going to get into the barrel. Um, but anyway, uh, there's no evidence whatsoever of uh, any bullet point damage, and uh, that's what I gauge it upon. What I do, what I do see is what I see with any uh, box magazine, uh, whether it's a detachable box or a fixed box magazine, uh, recoil, recoil does cause those, uh, those tips to bang into the front end of uh, the box and that causes a little bit of point deformation and some some manufacturers uh, like like Seiko for instance or if you want to say Saco um, they use protected points protected point bullets were designed for that in other words the jacket comes up uh, around the uh, open point and uh, there is no there is no elongated uh, point but uh, all that notwithstanding uh, I see no issue uh, there's certainly no safety hazard whatsoever. It's not going to harm the rifle, so onward. So these are the Winchester, and I don't have an explanation for why that uh, misfed. That would have absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with uh, bullet point uh, issues. I mean, that, that, was a, that was an extraction issue, not a, not a feeding issue. So uh, let's see what happens. And, uh, you know, sometimes the, 
the various powders have different uh, have different pressure curves that can cause different reactions in the uh, gas system. Uh, this is supposed to be a self-compensating gas system, but remember, it was self-compensating for military ammo. They, they weren't they weren't putting uh, civilian ammo into the mix. So let's see how she goes. Now that Federal uh, provided uh, a good degree of recoil more than the uh, IMI, the NATO stuff. See how this does. Ah. Let's see, I'll give it another one. I'll tell you better. I'm getting, I think, slightly more forward ejection. Um, again, that has to do with uh, the powder burning uh, speed. In fact, that brass is ejecting right directly to two o'clock, almost one o'clock. Um, that would tell me that uh, this powder is extremely fast burning. That's the same sort of thing that you'll get if you try to shoot, uh, say, uh, 4198 powder uh, in a uh, 223 uh, in, a, in a Mini-14. Uh, you'll get forward ejection like that. And sometimes, sometimes if you have something like a scope mounted on top, it's gonna it's gonna bobble around and it's and it's gonna jam it up. So um, that's why very fast powders are not really suited for uh, this sort of rifle. But uh, I would say by the, on the basis of that, um, this is probably not an ideal cartridge for this uh, rifle. But we'll see how the accuracy is. It should be ejecting more or less at uh, 3 to 4 o'clock. Recoil is about the same as the Federal, maybe a little bit lighter. Both of them are heavier than the uh, IMI. And the IMI is uh, identical to the uh, military stuff produced by the uh, United States. These were not designed for bench rest shooting, you know, the, the sling swivels uh, fixed in position. This is all right for the uh, front one. That, that acts as a good reference point, but the rear one here, uh, it doesn't, they don't fold. I mean, this is a straight, that's a shaft that goes up inside. Uh, there's about a three quarters of an inch tab that goes up inside the stock which is secured by a, a bolt which goes straight into the uh, buttstock here. The lo it's this lower buttstock screw which is really a long bolt that goes through that so it's that's not that's not movable. So that's it. Uh, after we uh, change targets we're going to be shooting um, let's go with the normal I think. All right. Next up comes the Norma. I'll see if I can bring that in. Hopefully you can see that. That's, that's called a protected point. Very little lead exposed. The uh, copper jacket comes up closely around the uh, fore, of, fore end of the bullet. And that does, that does protect it substantially from uh, battering in a magazine. Uh, we're going to try the uh, Norma and see how they do. Uh, I've had I've had very good luck with Norma ammunition in the past with different rifles, so we'll see. 
it's uh, it's one of the it's one of the world's better manufacturers, I believe. Um, the barrel's cooled down now. That walk down range allows the barrel to cool. One thing about a thin barrel is that uh, you know it it cools off quickly. Enough of that. So let's uh, see what the Norma does. And by the way, the Winchester also favored a little bit to the left, uh, a little bit more center than the uh, Federal was, but uh, we'll see what this one does. It's such a bright day today, I could definitely use a smaller aperture. This is a, this is a combat aperture. It's fine, it's good for all purpose, uh, but it's not sharpening the front sight as much as a, a small aperture would, but uh, it's good, it's sufficient. Wow, that's, recoil is uh, quite mild. I would say that was uh, on par with the uh, IMI. A little bit of a gust there. I'm going to wait for that one to go away. Nice smooth recoil. I think it's just as heavy as the uh, other commercial ammo, uh, but better. Uh, has a better pressure curve. Uh, I would say the, the recoil curve is uh, more uh, is spread out rather than being a, a jolt. I like this ammo as far as shooting it. See what it does. Ejection seems to be uh, very normal too. It's uh, ejecting uh, right off to my three o'clock. It's nice. It's, uh, it's performing well, but we'll see how it performs uh, on paper. That's the last one. There's a distinct, there's a distinctly different sound and feeling when you fire that last shot. And as far as the 150 grain stuff goes, we're going to follow up with the, the last one's going to be the uh, Seiko Super Hammerhead. This is also a uh, protected point, more protected even than the normal. Um, from the from the side, looking looking from the side, you don't see lead at all. Uh, the normal you can see a little bit. Uh, this is the the protected point is uh, virtually uh, flush with the end. It's very much like um, Nosler does with their uh, protected point, and that's why it's done. It's, it's done for that very reason to protect the uh, point from uh, recoil in any magazine. Not just not just auto loaders, uh, but uh, you know bolt action rifles also have that same issue too. So. Uh, I'll uh, head down range with a new target, put it up, and uh, then we'll see what happens with the, uh, after that we'll see what happens with that federal uh, match stuff. Well, I'm not at all surprised about how that Norma ammo shot. Um, certainly, not, uh, certainly not MOA, the rifle's not capable of that yet, but uh, very consistent, very round group, beautiful beautiful group uh, I would say so far it's by far the uh, 
the most consistent, and uh, it, it just felt right with the gun. It, it felt like the IMI. It felt like uh, military ammo. In other words, it just had that, had that smooth cycling because of the uh, pressure curve was uh, pretty much on tune for this gas system. So whether that's something that Norma intends with their uh, ammo, I have no idea. Uh, there are auto, there are other auto loaders out there that have similar gas systems and uh, you know gas port lengths, in other words, distance from distance from the uh, chamber to the gas port and from the gas port to the end of the barrel. So uh, you know this is pretty much this is pretty much on par with a, a lot of uh, firearms out there. Um, but for whatever reason, it, it worked well. So let's see how the Seiko does. Uh, for those of you who are, are familiar with Seiko ammo, um, it's, it's rated as being some of the very, very best uh, ammo in the world. I mean, it, it even feels good. The, uh, the brass cases are polished to a luster. It's, it, looks like, it looks like something uh, like, it, like you'd polish your dinnerware. Um, so let's see how it performs. And this is, again, a protected point a little bit more protected point than the uh, normal. All these rounds, all these rounds are hitting at the bottom of the, uh, toward the bottom of the bullseye. I forgot that my 10 clicks, my 10 clicks up is more or less a, a point blank uh, hold. In other words, if I was cutting the bullseye in two, but I'm not, I'm right now I'm uh, holding at a six o'clock hold. So they're a little on the low side. If I were to be shooting in, uh, if I were to be shooting bullseyes all the time, I'd raise it up at least one or two more clicks to uh, compensate for that. So I'm leaving it as it is, just so that uh, it doesn't uh, affect. I want to see how they all shoot across the board with the same setting. Ready to go. Well, that ejected right, I think it bounced off this box. I saw that one go out to three o'clock. Recoil's a little bit stiffer than the uh, Norma. It's uh, more of a more of a punch. It's not as much of a glide. It feels more like the Winchester stuff, or the maybe even the Federal. I'll wait till he's way around the hill. I'm looking north here. That's Mount Chikora, looking almost right behind the target. Mount Washington is right over there. I can actually see it. It's still got some snow on top of it. That's the highest peak in the uh, northeast. Um, I think it's 6,288 feet. I'm not sure. Can't say for sure. But uh, This would not be my pick for a uh, comfortable shooting gun all day it, if I had to shoot in positions. <laughs> That'd be it. It's the last one. 
we'll go down check that target out and uh, the last thing we'll try is that uh, federal premium gold medal match all right in the world of ammunition take nothing for granted can you say nine MOA <laughs> That's, Seiko Seiko makes some of the finest ammunition in the world but it doesn't it doesn't like this rifle or vice versa uh, it just it's just it's horrible um, so like I say uh, don't don't uh, read a book by its cover um, you really have to test ammo and see what it does in individual rifles and uh, for whatever reason I have no idea what would cause that sort of uh, inaccuracy with a rifle of this sort with simply with the ammo I you know these things can these things can baffle you but uh, that was easily the um, and it was consistently bad. I mean, it was not. It was not here and there. It was just consistently bad group. Uh, I'm quite sure. I'd I'd be willing to bet that that ammo in a uh, nice Seiko bolt action or a uh, Winchester or Remington bolt action rifle would perform superbly. But that's uh, that's the name of this game. You really have to uh, you have to uh, take ammunition on its merits according to your your own testing. Okay, finally now, we're going to be shooting the, uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is supposed to be the big wheel of the uh, competition uh, circuit. Um, we'll see, just don't know. 175 grain Sierra Match King bullet. At 2,600 feet per second. Now this is this is probably not going to be as comfortable to shoot as the 150s, even though it's a lower velocity. But the powder charge is still right up there. Smooth. I would say that uh, recoil wasn't bad at all. Smooth shooting. A little heavier recoil than 150 grain bullets, but uh, it's certainly powder that's tuned for this rifle. I'm watching those wind flags. I can't be too fussy. It's, it's still, it's, it's all day long. It's been coming from uh, 9 o'clock, uh, 9 to 10 o'clock, and um, it settles down once in a great while. My 50 yard, my 50 yard wind flag just suddenly spun around and did a 180. That's, that's weird. Uh, there's a little, there must have been a little turbulence right here on the top of this hill. There's a beautiful view here. Fantastic. You know, there's no reason to shoot 175 grain 30 caliber bullets unless you're way out to 600 yards. 168 grain bullet is uh, is, is more than enough uh, for for good accuracy. Um, it's better in it's better in rapid fire uh, rapid fire competition uh, cycles, and uh, it's certainly a lot easier on the shooter when you're uh, in position. So. There's nothing to be gained for 175 grain bullets unless you're stepping way out there. And the cycling is the ejection seems to be about typical for this rifle. 
three o'clock. And that was the last one. So we'll go down and finish this up and see how that did. Well, you know, <laughs> some ammo does what it's supposed to do. That uh, federal gold medal match, the 175 grain uh, Sierra match king bullet, very, very consistent with this rifle. Um, in fact, if I had been up one click, just one click, every single one would have been 10 and X's. A every one was a 10, and I still had 10 and X's, but they were centered down a little bit low, so I lost a few X's. But that's how accurately this rifle can shoot. Um, I'm sure it can do an awful lot better with a uh, glass bedded uh, action. Uh, that certainly can improve its accuracy. Right now, uh, it, its potential seems to be uh, lacking for that. So, I'm going to, uh, I've got this rifle loaded up with some IMI. I'm just going to see if I can plop that uh, steel target down there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And to you Patreon subscribers and donors, uh, thank you so much. All of you have a very uh, blessed Memorial Day and uh, many more. God bless. That's a six inch plate. Got that one. Really swinging, got away from it. Hit the rubber band that it's hanging from. Got that one. Let it slow down. That's why, uh, you know, you can certainly, even with a military grade uh, M1A, you can certainly score expert. That one. if I could roll a log over there.